If you need to reduce the height of bar stools, chairs, or other furniture, but aren't sure how to go about it or what result you'll get, stay tuned. You won't want to miss this episode of Shop Tales and Lore. Let's get right to it. Here's what you'll need. First, a saw suited for detail work, one that makes a very narrow kerf. An oscillating tool is perfect for this. If you don't have one, a fine tooth hand saw will work so long as the teeth have no set. This method is a two-step cutting process. Step one was done with the fine tooth flush cutting blade on the left. To complete the cut, we used a standard wood blade like the one on the right. The key to this technique is this jig, which serves as a cutting guide for the saw. It's just three pieces of scrap glued and bratted together. We'll get into building it in a moment. In this case, we made two because the front and rear legs were slightly different thicknesses. You'll also need a suitable clamp to hold the jig in place on each leg as you make the initial cuts. Finally, you'll need some medium grit sandpaper, a sanding block, and a matching stain. The stain may not be necessary in all cases because the sanded areas will be very small and hardly noticeable, but we thought it added a nice finishing touch. For building the jig, there are two critical dimensions. First, the overall length should equal the amount by which you want to shorten the chair. Second, this middle piece should be slightly wider by, say, a 32nd of an inch or so than the leg itself. Again, two jigs were needed in our case because the front and rear legs were slightly different thicknesses. Before we put the jig to work, let's look at how to position it as well as some special considerations that you might run into. If the legs on your chair look basically like this from the front, that is, if they are at 90 degrees to the floor, the jig we are working with in this video will work just fine with no modifications needed. On the other hand, if your chair legs look more like this, you'll need to take this geometry into account when building your jig and shape its top and bottom so that your cut line ends up parallel with the floor. Placement of the jig is important. You probably won't be able to cut completely around the leg by leaving the jig in any one position, so just switch it to the opposite face if necessary. The idea is to make sure you have a broad enough base to support the saw and keep it from wandering off the intended cut line. With the jig clamped in position, begin the cut, working your way around to all four faces of the leg. This is basically just a scoring cut. Don't try to slice deeply into the wood at this stage. Here we can see why the flush cutting blade works so well for this purpose. The teeth have no set, so the blade doesn't cut into the jig. Instead, the jig acts as a bearing surface, guiding the blade through a straight cut that is parallel to the floor. Once the scoring cut is completed, remove the jig and finish the cut with a wood blade. Take your time using a sharp blade and a light touch. Try to limit your focus to two adjacent sides that you can see clearly. Trying to plunge through the leg in one motion runs the risk of drifting off the cut line, especially on surfaces that are facing down or that you just can't see from your working angle. After cutting about halfway through, rotate the chair to get a better view of the remaining faces of the leg and finish the cut. If your cuts with the jig were accurate and uniform, you should have a perfectly level chair at this point. 
If for some reason the chair is still a little wobbly, a quick way to correct this is with a nibbling technique at the table saw. Raise the blade to about 1 32nd of an inch above the table surface and sliding the chair back and forth over the blade, take a small amount of material from the long leg or legs. Make very shallow cuts, rechecking the chair frequently on a flat surface. The cast iron saw table works great for this. If no table saw is available, almost any power sander can be used for this step. Just be sure to check your progress on a couple of different surfaces or areas of the floor in case any one spot is not perfectly flat. Now take a sanding block with some medium grit sandpaper and put a slight bevel on the sharp edges left by the saw. This gives a more finished look and prevents tear out of the grain. Full disclosure, since our project involved four bar stools, I grabbed an RO sander after hand sanding the first leg, but only to save some time. Finally, if the little bit of raw wood left by the sanding is a cosmetic issue, just dab a little matching stain on the sanded areas. Again, the sanding may not be noticeable at all in many cases, and this touch-up step may be unnecessary. Here's a look at our bar stool project at about the halfway point. If this video has been helpful to you, please leave a comment and do consider liking, sharing, and subscribing, all of which makes it possible for us to create more quality content to hopefully help make your time in the shop a little more enjoyable. Thanks for watching.